Okay, this sermon is entitled, How Do You Know Someone Truly Believes? I'd like to open up with prayer, <clears throat> and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 67 reads, God be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Now, in all honesty, this, this, this titular question, how do you know if someone truly believes, is actually a stupid question. But because of the hijacking of the term believe, or belief, and faith in the Bible, by the false prophets out there who've redefined what it means and perverted it, this is a necessary title. So let's take a look at some verses here. Believe it or not, the secular, you know, mainstream Christianity out there, and I call it secular because it's not... <clears throat> It's not true biblical Christianity. They will give you an antithetical definition to how do you know if somebody has truly believed, and they will tell you it's based on their works. They go into James chapter two and they try to say, well, if you have true faith, then it'll be it'll be it'll be accompanied by works. When in reality, that's not belief at all. If you add works, you're expressing unbelief. Now in Hebrews chapter four, we see an example of this in verse ten, and it reads, it says, "For he that is entered into his rest." Now pause for a second. What does it mean to enter into his rest? It's synonymous to being, you know, saved. Okay? He that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. So in order to be saved, in order to enter the rest, obviously it's by faith. Okay? If you jump back to verse 6, it talks about these people not entering the rest because of unbelief. Okay? So obviously to, to enter the rest is by faith, but you have to cease from doing works or from trusting in your works. You can't trust in both. It's impossible. Now turn back to Romans chapter 4. <clears throat> the only people that get saved are those that believe in what, you know, what, what, the, what the world calls easy believism. Because this is basically, you're just trusting in Christ, you're not adding works. And instead of faith without works is dead, or you have to have the works, it's faith plus works is damnation. Okay, that's the truth. Okay, Romans 4, 5 reads, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now this explicitly says that the only person that gets their faith, you know, counted or imputed for righteousness is the one that's not working. <clears throat> but he is in turn believing that Jesus Christ can justify the ungodly. That means any horrific, deplorable sinner out there can be saved if they trust that Jesus Christ will justify the ungodly. Okay, they're not working. They're simply believing on Christ. Now, I've got a list here of all the people that are not truly believing. So to answer the question, how do you know if someone has truly believed, is when they're not trusting in their works, they're not trusting in anything else, and they put their faith alone in Christ alone, they're trusting in Him 100% plus nothing, and they know for a fact they're saved. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Assurance accompanies faith. And I've got a list here of all the different types of people that are not truly believing, and hence, they're not saved. They're hellbound. They're goats. They're whatever you want to call them. Unsaved devils. It's very befitting. And here's the list. Number one, works adders. Okay, they've added anything to Christ that they're, that they're doing, or that they can do in their own ability, or that God's doing through them. I don't care how they word it. Okay, number two, the repentance crowd. Instead of simply believing on Christ for salvation, they're trusting in their own self, their own ability, to repent of their sins. Number three, the discipleship mixers. They've confused or conflated or convolved discipleship with salvation when they're two separate events. Number four, the people that have changed what it means to believe. They'll say that believe means obey. Well, those people are unsaved. Number five, salvific loss, the, the salvific losers, you know, the Arminians who think you can lose your salvation. And then number six, the last one on the list is People that believe in another Jesus. These unsaved Calvinists, they believe in another Jesus. They believe that Jesus only died for the elect. Limited atonement. And that God chooses who's going to be saved. That's another Jesus, and that's another gospel. And all these people on, the, on these lists are on their way to hell. These people have not truly believed. The only people that have are those that are not working, not trusting in their works, and they're believing on Christ alone. 
John 3.16 makes it clear, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's that simple. So watch out for these people that try to convolute the word belief and change it and, and redefine it and all this. These people are not Christians. They're not saved. They're not saints. And they need to be avoided. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.